All right, everyone, welcome back. After a long summer hiatus, we're back to tasting wines. Not that we haven't been tasting wines all summer. Oh yeah. We're ready to get back to work and start sharing some of our newest additions with you. Yeah, today we are actually uh, visiting our favorite wine region, the Tokai region. If you see that beautiful map up there, it's uh, in northeastern Hungary. Uh, all of this large area, 6,000 hectares of uh, planted grapes, are part of the Tokai region. There are 27 cities and villages that are part of it. Today we're focusing on one producer, the San Benedict Winery, who are located in the village of Taya. If you see, this is sort of the northwestern uh, part of the uh, of the region, uh, full of Grand Cru first class uh, vineyards based on the 1733 classification of Tokai. So I think we're gonna have a good morning. Easily. And we're actually gonna be tasting two wines from the same exact grape varietal. So not just the same producer or the same region, but the same varietal for mint, which in my opinion, and I think a lot of people's opinion is arguably the most important grape variety in the whole country. Absolutely, it, and it's my personal favorite wine. If, if I had to pick one Hungarian uh, grape to take on a desert island, it would be Furmint because it's a very versatile wine uh, covering the range from a sparkling wine to a sweet wine, obviously, uh, light, uh, dry white wine made in stainless steel tank and then barrel-aged cuties that, that uh, are worth uh, to be aging for decades. So uh, the guy's name is Josef Adam. And of course, like many of the winemakers in the Tokai regions, he focuses mostly on Formint, although he does play around with a couple of other great varieties, yep. mostly Haish Levelu, the natural counterpart. And so um, one thing I just love about his approach to winemaking is he's extremely patient when it comes to aging the wines, mm -hmm. and he never uh, lets anything out of the cellar or puts anything into the bottle until it's absolutely time for it. And this is something that we, that's quite rare nowadays because a lot of winemakers are tip tend to turn over and they want to sell it when they can. He says, no, you get the wine when it's ready. Yeah, I mean, winemakers do need cash, so uh, sure. cash flow is for sure important. But today we're going to taste an 11 year old wine and a wine that's around 15 years old. So these, you don't find these in very many regions. Uh, why, especially in the white side, people think about red wine as, as, as something that you can age for, for decades. Uh, ageable white wines are much uh, more rare uh, to find, and Tokai Dry is something that is definitely age, aging worthy. Yeah, let's give it a go. Cheers. Cheers. Happy Tuesday morning. Happy Tuesday morning. Incredible. Yep. When you taste this, what kind of global style of wine would you maybe try to compare it to mm -hmm. for people who, who know wine but maybe don't know Hungarian wine as well? I'm thinking of aged Burgundy, uh, bigger California style Chardonnays, but not um, with the fresh new oak, uh, you know, in the in the background or foreground, but with uh, more the slow oxidation and uh, the very elegant use of, of oak in the aging process. For me, all of that, like copy mm -hmm. and paste for sure, but it also reminds me a little bit of some older white Riojas, which of okay. course are typically using American oak, mm -hmm. and so they do have a little bit more punch on the, the side of that, you know, the woodiness and the smokiness, but this one, you can really taste that it's been, it's been sitting in the bottle for a long time and it's just dying to come out. And so we've got here 2013 vintage of uh, yeah, four meat coming from St. Benedict Winery, this is going to be one that was really a work of patience. The harvest started towards mid-late September and went almost till the end of October. So the idea would have been to pick the grapes only when they're ready and no sooner. It's a blend of actually uh, six different wines from four different vineyard areas. And just a note on that, uh, because I, I spoke to Yoji many times and he's very proud of this. Uh, he says he's a wine maker. And the way he makes the wine is that he makes different batches from different parcels in the same year and then and then blends them. It's only fooling, but it's a blend of different batches of wine. So we had fermentation and aging in oak barrels. And then for that, that maturation, it was about a 40 month process, mostly on fine leaves. So this is where we get 
the creaminess, the structure, the, the roundness, and just all of that substance that comes in a nice aged complex formant. This is really showing a more serious side of the grape, but absolutely. it's an absolute joy to drink it. Yeah, on the nose, when you sniff, take you through the first sniff, you do get a lot of this um, oakiness, uh, but again, it's integrated. It's 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 an eleven year old <laughs> wine, so nothing is is hanging out. Nothing is too much in it. It's it's in a pretty good balance, and I get a lot of the um, the classic uh, uh, green walnut nutty flavors of of an aged Furmint. But there's still some fruitiness there too. You get a lot of this nice yeah. kind of a sharp like Meyer lemon flavor, and also this really really ripe white peach as well. The nose does, which which is many times happens in Tokai, it does remind you of a sweet wine. Of course. Like you don't know what you're getting. No, you're, you're and, and even with the color of this one, it starts to be this, you know, oh. somewhere between pale and medium golden color, uh, quite uh, developed, especially mm -hmm. compared to, you know, these ready to drink styles. Mm -hmm. You can see that, okay, something's going on here. You take a sniff, you still don't know what you're getting into. And then finally tasting it reveals, oh, it's, it's a grand wine. It's what the French call Vendée Meditation. Sorry for my accent, but a wine that is uh, you can sip all night uh, while you're reading a book. You can sip it on its own or uh, it is like reading a book, actually. <laughs> and, um, and it's also a great food wine. I mean, this, this is a, a big wine that you could you could also it's also versatile on the table. Bingo. But in contrast, and in comparison, we have to go over also to the vineyard selection side. Older wine, same grape varietal, same producer, seeing a totally different side. Mm -hmm. So what do we got? Yeah, so we also have the the Saint Tomas Furmin. Saint Tomas is a, a Grand Cru first class vineyard in uh, the village of Mad, well, outside the village of Mad, uh, right above the uh, beautiful Catholic church of, 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 the, of the town. Uh, Tokai, as you can see behind me on the map, uh, has hundreds of different um, uh, vineyards that are named and St. Tomás is one of them. Uh, just in Mad there is, let's say, Becek, Perce, there is New Lasso, which translates as Rabbit Catcher, or Holdvöl, Moon Valley. So they have, they have beautiful names, very poetic names. Uh, this one is named after the, the patron uh, saint of, of the church, St. Thomas, and it's a volcanic uh, vineyard. Uh, all of this uh, St. Thomas uh, Dule uh, hillside or vineyard is uh, 73 hectares, so it's not a big area. There are 37 owners, including some of the most prestigious producers like Royal Tokai, uh, Sepshi, and and San Benedict Pinza also has yes. a, uh, a little area. Give, give that a smell, give that a taste, and you know, oh. it's it's everything that we loved about the first one, mm -hmm. but now the minerality, the complexity, just the intensity is just turned all the way up until 11, maybe even 12, in my, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a beautiful wine, and I haven't even tasted it yet. The, the nose is so complex. The first one was more about forming the grape. Uh, it's fruity, it's, it's the aged forming. This one is, Saint Tomas. It's, it's the terroir. Uh, flinty. Flintiness. Very flinty, very yeah, wet stones, very steely. Mm -hmm. So this was also hand harvested and aged in Hungarian oak. Uh, actually two oak, two, two um, uh, large barrels, 500 uh, liter barrels. And uh, that actually also limits the quantity. Uh, I think we had just above 900 uh, bottles made. This is 15 years old or so, and uh, 200 bottles are in the US, the, the rest is here. It's very, very limited. <laughs> to me, the finish is tropical fruit, mango, mm. and sort of a, has a, it, it's not a sweet finish. Uh, it does have a bit of residual sugar, you know, a few grams, uh, but it has a very fruity finish, which is really nice and actually makes this wine very very well rounded and and smooth and it's amazing that this comes through on the finish but it's not dominating the attack of the wine so when no. you first take a sip it's all of that terroir and soil and minerality and you know the oak aging and all the features that give complexity to the wine but then it ends with that fruitiness it's an amazing wine i'm 
blown away. I would have been satisfied just drinking the first I one. I know. And then I when know. you showed me the, the next one, it's like, okay, there's there's a whole new dimension we have to explore. I know. I know. And this just goes to show that the best things are worth waiting for. And this goes for sweet wines, this goes for dry wines, and this goes for the entire Tokai region. Guys, uh, these wines are available on tastehungry.eu for our European followers and tastehungry.us for our American uh, friends. Most definitely, or even better, come here, visit us in Budapest, Rodishan Baruta, number 22, and give it a try for yourself. Cheers to Tokai. Cheers to Tokai. Thank you. Thank you.